The sun wakes up with a bunch of new bright regions and a spectacular solar flare. Those stories are more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely beginning to pick up. You know, we started with a spotless sun, but as we switch to our Earth-facing disk this week, take a look at that. Bam, 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 bam. There are four bright regions in Earth view. They all kind of came up all at the same time, including region 2775, and they've been firing off little mini flares. On top of that, we have region 2776, so this is the second sunspot that is in Earth view, and it's been firing some mini flares. And then, as set 27 775 rotates off of the west limb in this in earth view look at this whoosh that was a beautiful c-class flare you could see that big fire jet jumping out there and in fact it was partially occulted so that re that means that the the sun was actually blocking part of that region so likely that was even a stronger flare than what was registered here at earth so the sun is finally beginning to give us some fireworks and on top of that we also have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the earth strike zone here over the next couple days and it could bump us up to active conditions and that's some good news for aurora photographers now as we switch to our far-sighted sun, this is Stereo A and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. My goodness, look at that! The bright regions just keep coming. We can see region 2775 as it's rotating off of Stereo's west limb. There's region 2776 also in the south and it looks like it's got some activity going. And then there's two regions in the north. One of them has already fired off a mini solar storm and it looks like it continues to fire off some stuff. And what is this big region on the east limb in Stereo's view and look at that big towering filament that's hanging over it like a big bridge. If that thing rotates into Earth view and erupts, it could give us a gorgeous solar storm here at Earth. But it, no matter what, it's going to go soon and it's going to be a spectacular show. So it looks like finally Solar Cycle 25 is here and things are getting exciting. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of a new moon on our way to the first quarter. And by the 24th, the moon will be about 55% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. So you're going to have to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind from that corona hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone, but this may be the beginning of an extended period of some fast solar wind from both that corona hole that's in the equatorial region and also the northern polar coronal hole, which gave us a decent storm about a month ago. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions to up to about minor storm conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a major major storm and these conditions will continue to ramp up till about the 25th or so that's where we might actually start seeing g2 level storm conditions now at mid latitudes we're only expecting unsettled conditions but we easily have up to about a 10 percent chance of minor storm conditions and again that's near the end of this five day and conditions might actually get a bit more intense after that because right about the 25th is when we're expecting the intense part of this fast solar wind to hit us from both both of these coronal holes and that could bump us up to a G2 level, but we've got a little ways way to wait. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a few bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, but right now they're only firing C-class flares. We don't have any risk for big flares, so no radio blackouts, thankfully, and that should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. However, these bright regions are continuing to boost the solar flux, especially region 2776. It is a little bit noisy, but the nice thing about that is that it's keeping that solar flux into the mid-70s for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. And with the new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over the next couple of days, this uh, solar flux should stay in the balmy mid-70s easily throughout the rest of this week. Now, also because we are at solar minimum, well, we're beginning to climb out of it, aren't we? But we're not quite there yet. <laughs> the solar, uh, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher than it normally would be. 
So you frequent flyers, and this does include uh, air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely getting a bit exciting. We went from a completely spotless sun to suddenly having all these bright regions in Earth view. And on top of that, they're all high latitude bright regions. So that means they're all new cycle activity. Plus, two of them ended up being sunspots, and they're active with some flares, including one of the biggest flares we've seen, if not the biggest flare we've seen of this new cycle. It was an absolutely gorgeous flare, and it was probably even larger than it registered at Earth because it was kind of partially occulted by the sun's limb. So that's fantastic. And then if we flip to the sun's far side, my goodness, we've got even more bright regions on the, in stereo's view, including one with a big filament bridge, and it looks like that could go and make it a beautiful solar storm. So, my goodness, do we have a lot of eye candy suddenly. It looks like Solar Cycle 25 is really beginning to light up. Now, on top of that, we do have a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone, and this could begin a period of some extended solar storming with some fast solar wind that's going to be coming from both that coronal hole and also the northern polar coronal hole. Last time this happened, it bumped us up to G2-level storms, but that was not, that's not going to be until about the 25th. So you Aurora photographers, you definitely have a little time yet. This should ramp up kind of slowly. So you have time to change your batteries and get things charged up and ready. And we'll see. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that this will give you as nice a show as it did last month. Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know that solar flux is definitely popping up into the mid-70s, and that should give you some decent, eh, marginal, the decent radio propagation on Earth's day side, and let's hope this is the beginning of a nice upward climb, because it sure looks like these bright regions aren't going away anytime soon. And now you GPS users, well, you know what? We still aren't worrying about any big uh, solar flares at this point, so GPS, and it, it looks pretty good all over the globe, because we also don't have any solar storms that should be hitting as of yet. Now, next week, that may be a totally different story, so enjoy your GPS reception, because right now, it should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.